Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan and I'd like to talk today about the relationship between thyroid and mental health. And to start by posing the question, how much of what we are calling psychiatric pathology is in fact thyroid dysfunction? And it turns out this is a hard question to answer because of limitations in conventional diagnostics, which typically consist only of one blood test called a TSH, and in conventional treatment, which typically consists only of replacement of synthetic thyroid hormone, or T4. And this paradigm neglects and dismisses the complex interplay between the brain, hormone levels, glands and receptive tissues, mitochondria, and the immune system, and the pivotal role of the gut, diet, and environmental exposures. And the problem with this limited conventional paradigm is that patients are left suffering with chronic symptoms of fatigue, insomnia, brain fog, lethargy, depression and anxiety, and changes in metabolism. They are told that they're fine, they are referred to a psychiatrist, or they are treated by a non-specialist with psychiatric medication, often for a lifetime, in total neglect of the root cause of their symptoms. And perhaps the most important consideration when it comes to root causes is that of autoimmunity which is when the immune system selectively targets, in this case, a gland for destruction. I have a personal and professional vested interest in autoimmune thyroid dysfunction, whether it's Graves, Hashimoto's, or postpartum thyroiditis. And I have been following a literature that suggests that 20% of patients with depression have thyroid autoantibodies, that 52% of these patients have subclinical hypothyroidism, a type of hypothyroidism that would not be detected with conventional testing. That in pregnancy, the presence of thyroid autoantibodies alone not only predicts adverse neonatal and obstetrical outcomes, but also postpartum depression and even postpartum psychosis. And that an intervention as simple as 200 micrograms of selenium a day can improve those thyroid autoantibody levels. And that in what we are calling bipolar mania, Signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism have been documented, which calls into question the use of thyrotoxic medications such as lithium in these patients. And that over the years, placebo-controlled randomized trials have demonstrated that active thyroid hormone, or T3, is an effective mood stabilizer. But if we are going to think about the root cause of these symptoms, we have to look at the whole person, and we have to look at the web of influence whether it's micro or macronutrient content of their diet, exposure to food antigens such as gluten, environmental exposures such as fluoride, metals, and endocrine disrupting plastics, and even medications like oral contraceptives. Because it's only when we think about the whole person and all of these influences and exposures do we have the opportunity for lasting resolution of symptoms. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for listening.